Guys, we are here with Ruben, my man. <laughs> and How's it we, going? <laughs> and we are looking at the Frenchie Bible. We've got Mr. Wick here. Ruben's going to give us a breakdown, teach us some things. You guys know I'm not a fan of the French Bulldog, but education is key. And uh, my goal this year actually is to go and connect with as many people as possible in other breeds to learn as much as I can about dogs in general. Um, Cause I'm obsessed about dogs for years. I even like playing. Hey, what dog is this? So, like, subscribe, share. Uh, he's going to teach us all that he knows. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> yeah. In the amount of time that we've got, but um, uh, you know, before we even start, you know, I just got here along with Trevor. We just got in here from um, SFO, Ruffalo from Texas, and uh, I brought out Wick, and I started kind of going over some some things, and not even really consciously, you know going you know in my mind at least you know but then he told me to hold up he's gonna get the camera <laughs> so, showtime um, Ruben, Ruben's not used to having a, a, a shooter <laughs> no 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 not at all no, no, it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a one-man show for the most part you know so um in this particular case you guys see like you know this is kind of where I live and I got my you know here's my little stacking table excuse all the all the you know hairs on top of the table right now I use this you know we're getting him I don't want to, well, I don't know when this is going to get published, but uh, he potentially might show this Saturday. So obviously I start my grooming a week in advance. I use my slicker. And so basically this is a horse slicker. And uh, you know, it gets all of the dead follicles, all of the dead hair from way deep underneath that are rooted in. So you want to give your, your dog a really nice coat to perform with. And you know, I was working on wigs. So that's why I've got all that hair on top of that. So um, first and foremost, you know, I think what people are really lacking in is that unfortunately, you know, they're not getting their dogs used to being on a table. So, um, you know, that's the first thing that I would recommend is working your dog on a table. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to give them a quick little walk around. Tease them up. Boom. There's our stack. There's our free stack. He's actually a little bit off on the leg that's closest to Trevor, but I'll recondition him and reposition him. Take him around. Bring him around. There he is. Give him a back. Bring him up front. Until and it's still he's still messing it up, you know, but I won't get mad at him I'll just kind of reposition him and get him back, you know, so right there. I lost him again There we go. Boom. There he is You know and I can just see from the top that I got enough arch in the You know and you can't keep him here forever, right? So if the judge is looking at you, this is where you go, right? So there you go. The judge gives you the first pass. There's your table You know hypothetically you're in line Way to stack your dog. So the position we were in momentarily would be if the judge would be looking from that angle. But for the most part, the judge is going to be looking at this angle. So try to remember to keep your dogs on your left side. You know, I like to use this little resco lead. You know, try to go right underneath the mandibles here, keep it nice and tight, nice and tight. And I keep it the control right here. I go around my thumb one, two, and this is where I keep my lead at all times. So I make my controls right here. You know. I make my controls right here at all times. So other thing a lot of people make a mistake is that here is the table. The table is like, uh, you know, let's say five, 10 feet and they'll pick up their dog from here towards the table. If the judge, God forbid you get a specialty judge, that's already showing the denouncement of your dog not having the ability to get to that table. So it may sound a little bit, uh, uh, you know, that their people are overdoing it but i actually learned this from bradley briscoe who i happen to have won nationals with his whippets and it's true so when you got a table dog don't pick them up from way back here and walk them it actually makes it look like the dog has no function or the dog can't get to the table so you get your table take your steps right about here boom one hand part of the chest one right underneath pick them up set up your dog okay now Ruben, what you're gonna do is what we did in this video right here, people, we're gonna break down the things he likes about the Frenchie and why he likes, well, why he likes his Frenchie. In particular. In particular, using some of the standard information, like, hey, I like the way his his chest is, uh, his shoulder to sc scapula to, to, you know, whatever he's gonna teach us. I'm just here shooting to make sure the messaging's clear. And then we're gonna get into some more Frenchie fun and as many facts as possible. So walk us through, okay, as you was doing a second ago, what it is you're looking for when you're like, I like this dog. Okay, so first and foremost for me, what I like is his, his demeanor, his temperament. The guy wants to work. You know, so I set him up on the table. 
and he, he's he's not shy. He's willing to work. He lets me get you know get him into position. Right now, if you look at his position right there, I'll fix up his rear leg a little bit. You guys are gonna notice a bit of what happens to be called a roach back. It's not as as um you know amplified on him as other dogs you know because you can see that the section right here you want it right towards the end right here this is where you want your roach right there and so you've got five parts in the spinal cord you know it starts with your cervical and then from there it goes into your thoracic lumbar and then it goes into your coccygeal and then your sacrum this little last edge right here this is your sacrum right here so you want that rise to be right in between the coccygeal and the actual ending part of the lumbar section and so this little area right here you know and it's right above what's called the under tuck under tuck is right here this is the under tuck you see how he's got a little bit of a rise right there so a lot of you guys that are keeping these dogs really 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 obese you're not getting the under tuck why because this whole carriage right here around his ribs is just overdone and then this under tuck just drops so we want to have a nice little under tuck right about here you know and it just kind of sculpts the body out and it exemplifies and it actually you know magnifies that little roach you know so that's one thing that i really like about him is his actual demeanor his attitude his his eagerness to please you know so you know but unfortunately that's all good and dandy but when a judge comes up to a dog they start from the head they start from the head and right off the bat you know they'll come to the head you'll notice if you were to draw an intersection at the top of his nose it intersects at the eyes it intersects at the eyes and that's what you want because if the dog's nose was a little bit too dropped then you know obviously it, it doesn't you know come to the confirmation it doesn't give him that look now the other thing right near if i'm looking straight at him it's kind of hard to tell uh, but looking at that 45 degree angle so a lot of times the judge will go through the side so as the judge you're here holding your dog you're stacking your dog you're here as the judge moves you move alongside the judge to give him that nice little glimpse on the side and they're looking for that little invert which is called the 45 degree angle and a lot of judges some of them may do them some may not you know they'll put their hand and look for that you know and that's roughly a give or take a 45 degree angle other thing is eyes you want some dark amber eyes dark amber eyes and you want the separation in their eyes to be almost in concurrence where the ears are you know and the ear placement should be at the one o'clock and the eleven o'clock ears should not be no longer so if i were to fold his ears and they went over his eyes that's considered a too much of a long ear so right here you can see his ears match up right where his eye where right where the tip of his eye is you let go and that's where in theory the ear should be in terms of length you know as we keep looking at the dog we also want to look at the plane in between the ears this area right here should be nice and flat right here and there you go perfect now he's not a perfect dog but right there so far he's looking pretty darn good after they look at that they look at the nostrils they look at the face they look at you know they'll start to look at the at the bite you know and the bite is, is it supposed to be scissor like every other breed? absolutely not no <laughs> absolutely not so basically with the bite they're looking for that turn up right here and when I mean a, a turn up, basically, it's kind of like a, like a spoon. It kind of comes up like this. But you don't want a lot of space in between the lower and the upper region. You know, you want to be able to put be able to put a pencil in there. And like you see in this guy, you can't fit a pencil. So if he were to have a scissor bite, that's a big no-no. <laughs> that's a big no-no for French Bulldogs. So as we continue to work down the region, you want to have a neck that doesn't necessarily not too long not too short because some of these dogs you know people on love it that have no neck but here's the thing with a dog that has no neck he doesn't have flexibility at the atlanto axial junction and that is a junction where the actual axis of the skull starts to hook up with the actual part of his skull and they can't do this 
they can't look up when they've got uh, no neck. So only here, eyeballs like a nigga that go, got knocked like out. This. <laughs> so this is this is you know something you guys can use in your stacking techniques called the rainbow technique, where you go like this and then you drop it. So you get the flexion, you get to drop it, or you can actually do another technique which is called hanging. It doesn't mean you're gonna hang your dog, but you're gonna run right underneath as close as you get and can get to the mandible joint and you're gonna kinda hang them like this. You know, but you wanna be really, really, really cautious where you don't over exacerbate and there you go. You're hanging your dog. Okay, so another another, you know, after we've gone a con through this whole section with the front and the neck, you go down towards this region right here, which is the scapulas, right here. And the scapula is actually hooking into the humerus. And as you're looking at this, you want to get this region of his body to be wider than his rear. So just by looking at him from the straight up and down, he looks like a upside down pear, meaning a pear, if you flip it upside down, the thickest portion of it is more mass and then it gets thinner. So if you were looking at him from the top to the bottom, you'll notice that there's more mass, there's more dimension at the front that there is than there is in the rear. So that's looking really good so far. Now there is a flaw on him that I caught right now and I'm not gonna say it on camera. <laughs> I'll save it for off camera. So like I go. said, he's, he's gonna be competing. I don't wanna give anyone any No ideas. leeway, yeah, no, no idea. No, absolutely not. So, um, but that's it, that's the basis of it though. It's worth, uh, oh, the knees, that's a big one too. Absolutely, so, you know, as, as we continue working, you know, the, the judge will come here, look at this, look at the bite, look at the look at the ears, might maybe get his attention, you know, to make sure that- got a little the clicker, I've seen the clicker. Yeah, you know? he gotta, you know, get his, uh, get his ear placement going. You know, just to look at the ear placement. Oh Lord. Quick second, ladies and gentlemen. This is from Shanghai. We're not gonna answer. That's a Chinese number. Uh, you know, and you know, so so I'm already looking at the ear placement by him giving us, you know, so ears that are too pointy, they're not disqualifications, but you guys guys want that nice roundness, you know. Nice roundness going in the ear, kind of resembling that of a bat. You know, that's like the term everyone uses, bat ears. Other thing I really like about this guy is look at the size of these cheekbones, man. It's like he's got some jawbreakers in there. You know, so I really, really like, enjoy that. And so as we're working, you know, on the dog, looking at him, you know, and it's hard for me to look at him there's nobody, but you know what, let me, we can set him up on this little, He's excited, <laughs> you know. You'll look at the angulation. Of the rear knee, you know. As the dog just starts to descend, ascend from the front towards the rear, you'll notice right here, these hawks, there's a slight angulation. A lot of dogs, and this is something that actually as a handler, you can actually fix, you know? If you see have a dog that's straight up and down like this, you don't want that. You can actually load up the knee and redrop it and create an artificial, an artificial angulation. That's, you know, that's called loading up the knee, you know? <laughs> so as, as the judge looks at that little um, angulation per se, you know, it's gonna do two things, you know? It tells you if a dog can angle like that, the chances of him moving are pretty good. If they're straight up and down, I'm just gonna falsify like that. Looks like he's walking on high heels. <laughs> you know, the dogs actually tend to track in an up and down and it causes sway in the hips. And these dogs are not supposed to do that. They're supposed to kind of glide with the come and go, meaning these two come and these two go. We'll and show you that in another video. Yeah, too. definitely. You know, so, um, you know, after I, you know, Look it down, looking them down, this and that. Of course, good muscle mass. You want some nice muscle, you know, you want to fear for testicles. Make sure both tell yeah, they're both there. <laughs> no crypt organism going on there. You and know that is congenital, right? It is congenital, absolutely. And you know, it and, can, I, and I'm I'm asking that because I know that uh 
unfortunately, I'll show you a message later, but a woman said she paid $3,000 for a bully. He's two years old and, or a year old, and his balls haven't dropped. She said, should I be worried? I said, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. She yeah. says, well, what am I supposed to do? I said, you paid 3000 You, you want to go get him checked, make sure there's some balls up there. Exactly. And then I think there, I said, I'll ask the big guy, but I think uh, there could potentially be a surgery that needs to be had. Uh, to get them things to drop because they don't want to be you don't want them there too long. No, 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 no. That's a that's a great question. You know, it's a, and it's funny you say that because it's funny. You know, they're 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 tubes. You know that connect that connect with the actual um, you know part of their anatomy. They can if they go if the, depending on how ascended they are up in the um, abdominal wall can start to tangle with either their uh, uh, their colon or their actual intestines themselves. And as, as they start to, if the dog's very motile, very happy-go-lucky, they can start to wrap around the intestines and actually cause necrosis, you know. And um, and sometimes, you know, depending on the, on the, um, on the testicle itself, it can become tumorous. Uh, it's just, you know, it's bad news all day. So, mm, you know, unfortunately, it's not your you know a very easy fix in terms of just removing and you know doing a uh, um a surgery where you just remove the testicles you actually have to go into the abdominal wall and search for the actual testicle itself you can follow the you know the vast deference and find it you know but sometimes if they're kind of lodged in they're up really 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 deep uh it takes a little bit more of a little bit of what i consider an exploratory surgery just to find those testicles and then um you know do the actual neuter right then and there you know so it's not your your average you know you know in and out type of surgery unfortunately so you know they they go and they check make sure that the testicles have ascended you know and depending on the age of the puppy you know it could be like that's why they, they don't start giving points to puppies underneath six months of age an animal can retain its testicles up to the age of six months sometimes even more but it's really rare i mean by the time you know three to four months you should have something there or you should be able to palpate you know so you know when you have your dog on the table always important to have somebody you know continuously t touching on them feeling here because a, if they haven't been handled and you know a judge comes up and the dog's not used to it and you get a dog that's just skittish all over the place it's gonna make it really hard on the judge you know so the more you can put them on a table like this and play around with them and you know check their ears and kind of do this and this and look at their mouthpiece and you know check out their teeth and grab their paws and do this and you know kind of just put your hands on them and kind of put pressure on them like this another thing that people you know judges will do depending on their knowledge and their lack not lack I'm sorry you know their extensive you know notation on the actual musculoskeletal system they'll do something that's called tapping the knee right so they'll go take a thumb and they'll do this you know there's nothing there there's no movement and if a dog has weak knees those knees will just go snap crackle pop side to side and those also known as laxating patella something you don't want in your lines definitely don't want in your lines because you've got dogs with luxating patellas you'll get something that's called cow hawking where both knees are kind of coming in on each other when the dog's actually gating so be very cautious of that so when you get a, a judge when you got him on the knee and he taps them and the knee starts moving around that's the next thing they're going to be looking for that cow hawking when they're moving up and down and those are little details that are helping the judge get a better understanding of this dog you know but you cannot throw the baby out with the water you know so like i said there is something on this dog that like i said i'll, I'll <laughs> camera, I <laughs> talk we'll, we'll discuss it but objectively people so we're, we're, this right here head eyes nose teeth shoulders uh roach and knees yes those are the those are the you kind of go from ascending to descending and it starts with an overall look right the judge comes here right there boom perfect right there that dog's already telling me a lot like from here i can already see the lane the plane of his head's level eye separation looks great you know if i'm in doubt i'll come up and okay you know and do this to make sure that but i can see it does not have you know long <laughs> rabbit ears you know so just from a configuration i can already see that the flus also are not excessive you know the flus right here you don't want these flus hanging all the way down like a mastiff per se you know so he's got decent sized flus and then from there i'll either if i was a judge i'll either ask the owner show me the bite or i'll just come in other thing is like a lot of people come in and they want to show the bite like this right you guys are going to cover their noses and you're going to impede his breathing i'm not putting pressure on it but i see people do this so what you do is you grab both thumbs 
when the judge says, show me the bite, boom, boom, two go. thumbs. Look, there you go, people. So that's breaking down Mr. Wick. We'll get a couple of the dogs out and teach you a little bit more. Stay tuned. Take care of your dogs. Like, subscribe, and share.